Hi, my name is Rachel and you're watching the Rachelistic channel. Welcome back to my channel. So it is October and if you didn't know, October is ADHD Awareness Month. So my plan for October was to do the same thing that in April for like Autism Month and like post each week about ADHD, but yes, I've been struggling with keeping a schedule and stuff lately, so clearly that hasn't really happened. I'm still gonna post my videos that I had planned about ADHD, but it will just go into November instead of being all in October, so yes. <laughs> So as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about signs of ADHD that get overlooked and missed a lot. So let's just get right into it. <laughs> so the first sign that we're going to talk about today is hyperfocus. When most people think about ADHD, they think about people who have like a super short attention span or get distracted all the time and yeah they're not really able to like focus on anything but that's not true <laughs> adhd is not really just about getting distracted all the time it's more about having difficulty with regulating your attention and focus and so hyper focus is actually quite common for adhders so what is hyper focus Hyperfocus is, it is what it sounds like. So it's a very high level of focus on a particular activity that can last for hours. And it usually gets to the point where you block out or like tune out the things that are going on around you. So when someone is hyperfocusing or when someone is hyperfocused on something, they can like forget to like eat or use the bathroom. They might not hear people calling their name or like talking to them or they might not notice it getting like darker outside because they're just so focused on whatever it is that they're doing. So hyper focus shows up a lot usually when an ADHD -er is doing something that they like. So a lot of the times you'll see it when they're playing video games or maybe scrolling on social media or watching TV like they'll just sit there doing that for like hours on end and I think sometimes that can get mistaken for like just like being lazy because like people will see them like playing video games for hours but then not being able to like focus at work or do their homework or something like that so they like why can you focus all this time on playing video games which you can't even like take out the trash or something like they just think that they're being lazy and they don't want to do things but actually they're just hyper focusing and yeah <laughs> but hyper focus can also happen when doing other activities really it's just whenever you're really engaged in what you're doing and you're like getting dopamine from it you can hyper focus on it <laughs> so yeah it can show up in cleaning as well when you're doing schoolwork or at your job or something that may not necessarily be something that you're interested in but as long as you're engaged in it you can definitely hyper focus on it as well so as i said before hyper focus happens quite regularly for actually did i say that before i don't know but hyper focus happens quite regularly for adhd years but it's often overlooked as a sign of ADHD, I, mostly because it kind of contradicts like the stereotype of ADHD. And so if you do pay attention to things for a long time because you're hyper-focusing, people might not necessarily equate that with ADHD. So the second sign that people miss is mood swings. So mood swings in ADHD years are often misdiagnosed uh, or misunderstood as like bipolar disorder which doesn't make any sense to me because as far as I know from what I learned in school like bipolar disorder is just it's like going between periods of like 
major depression and like mania. And so that's not really the same thing as a mood swing. So I don't really know how people are getting misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder from having mood swings. But if someone can explain that to me in the comments, please explain it to me because I don't understand how that how that makes any sense. But moving on. <laughs> so what are mood swings? I think pretty sure everyone knows what a mood swing is, but for those who might not know what a mood swing is, a mood swing is an abrupt or a sudden and significant change in your mood. So, you know, it's basically like you're happy one minute and then the next minute you're sad or you're angry one minute and the next minute you're excited. Like you just go from one mood to the next mood like really quickly. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if the camera can hear that. So ADHDers have trouble managing their emotions. Like that's a part of ADHD. And they also tend to feel like emotions more deeply than others, especially negative emotions like anger, anxiety, frustration, sadness, like those emotions tend to be felt a lot like stronger than the other emotions um, for people with ADHD. And so that is a huge factor in like them having mood swings. Also like being impulsive and having trouble with like self-control also adds to like getting mood swings. Mood swings can also be caused by mental illness or like medication that you're taking. It is very common for people with ADHD to experience mood swings. It's not really something that people typically associate with ADHD, which is again why it is a sign that gets missed a lot. So the next sign that gets missed that we're going to talk about is sleep problems. So like the other signs I've been talking about, sleep problems are really common for people with ADHD. About 25 to 50 percent of ADHD ears have problems with falling asleep, staying asleep, and or waking up. Sleep problems are mostly seen in teens and adults with ADHD and that's, typ and that's because they typically start around puberty. So. That's why sleep problems is not in the diagnostic criteria for ADHD because they usually only start at puberty and all of the criteria for ADHD has to be seen when you're a kid. So yeah, but it's interesting because sleep problems are actually really common for like teens and adults with ADHD. So yeah, the four kind of like biggest areas where ADHDers experience sleep problem are one difficulty with falling asleep. So a lot of the times you'll experience having like a racing mind at night. So just like mental restlessness. So having like a lot of thoughts, maybe thoughts about things that you're worried about or just lots of thoughts in general about different things and you're just thinking about a bunch of stuff and you can't go to sleep because you're just thinking so much. Um, I definitely experienced that. <laughs> And they can also have difficulty with falling asleep because they get like a sudden boost of energy at night for like no apparent reason. So it's just like you're awake. The second area is having like restless sleep. So like that's like tossing and turning a lot in your sleep and just like being like a light sleeper. So like any little noise you wake up. A lot of the times if, if you have restless sleep you wake up feeling tired instead of feeling like well rested. The third area is having difficulty with waking up. So if you do manage to get into a deep sleep then it's very difficult to wake you up from that. A lot of the times it's like they reach like that deep, they finally like fall asleep and get into a deep sleep like in the early hours of the morning like 2, 3 a.m. and then they have to wake up at like say like 7 or something so then it's like extremely difficult to wake them up and then they're not really fully awake until like noon or something. I think that's probably why a lot of ADHDers identify as like night owls probably because 
they have sleep problems and they just can't wake up early in the morning. Anyways, and then the fourth area is having intrusive sleep, which this one I don't think is as common, but basically like if you're not like fully engaged in what you're doing or you're like bored, then you just get really drowsy and maybe even like fall asleep suddenly. It's kind of like narcolepsy which is just like it's a condition where you just like fall asleep randomly <laughs> like suddenly <laughs> like you could just be like going about your business fully awake and then you just fall asleep like that so it's kind of like that but it's not like that because you'll feel drowsy obviously and then I don't know you don't always fall asleep but it can get to the point of you falling asleep so those are the sleep problems that ADHD is struggle with. Sleep problems with ADHD isn't really like research that much and it's like I said before it's not a part of the diagnostic criteria of ADHD so of course it gets missed a lot and people tend to attribute like having sleep problems with like other things but it could be because you have ADHD so you never know. And also a lot of people tend to forget that like ADHD doesn't just affect you during the day it also very much affects you at night and so yes it is a 24 hour condition I read somewhere <laughs> but yeah anyways our next sign that people miss is time blindness so we all know that one person who's always late to everything you know you give them the time they say they're gonna be on time, but there's they're they're always late. You know, it gets to the point where you start giving them like an earlier time than what the time is that you want them to meet you at because you know that they're gonna be late. So you just give them the wrong time so that they actually get there on time. We all know that person, okay? But did you know that that person could most likely have ADHD? Being late all the time must assign time blindness. And so ADHDers are often time blind. I'm pretty sure the majority of people with ADHD are time blind. And so basically what that means is that they aren't aware of like time. So like they're not really aware of like what time it is or how much time is left or like how much time has passed. It's like really difficult for them to like figure that out. And so when people are time blind, it makes it difficult for them to use their time effectively because they, they're not really like aware of, of time. Time blindness looks like losing track of time because of distractions, which can lead to people being late a lot. Feeling like you don't have a really good internal clock. So like if you didn't have like a clock near you or like your phone or something to tell you the time like you wouldn't know what time it is at all you wouldn't know like anything I, I that's definitely me honestly because I never know what time it is so anyways it also looks like having poor time management being impulsive getting bored really easily losing track of time when you're switching tasks you know you're going from eating breakfast to getting your bag together to go to school and then all of a sudden you know you're on your phone looking up the price of hair dryers for some reason because you got distracted and then yeah the last thing is also procrastination so because a lot of the traits of like time blindness like being late procrastination you know getting bored easily like those traits are like quite common and like everybody experiences them and like everybody knows someone who like experiences those kind of traits a lot and so people don't really associate it with ADHD it's kind of like especially when with the person who's late all the time sometimes we kind of just think of it as being like a personality trait like oh that's just them they're just late all the time but it's like no actually it's probably time blindness and they probably have ADHD <laughs> it's not a personality trait okay <laughs> it's ADHD <laughs> and so my last and final sign is social awkwardness and tr having trouble with relationships 
So having troubles with social skills and relationships is often attributed to autism because it is a big part of autism. It's like one of the main diagnostic criteria for autism. So that makes sense. But people with ADHD can also struggle with like social skills, social relationships and that type of thing. And not just because they might also be autistic but because of ADHD. The reasoning behind like autistic people having troubles with like social communication and people with ADHD having troubles with that is different and so yeah even though they can both experience it the reasoning behind it is different. So for those with ADHD some common problems that they can experience is like having trouble picking up on social cues and that can happen because either they're not paying attention to other people's behaviors and like their body language and stuff like that because like, they're getting distracted. Yeah. I don't know why I said it either. They also though, can have trouble with keeping friends because some people might view like ADHD years as like being like really intense. Maybe because of because they're hyperactive they can be hyperactive or impulsive so maybe they see that as being really intense and they just don't really want to hang out with you which is kind of rude. Also it could be because they just have troubles with like turn taking and sharing and like having an equal I don't know parts of their relationship. So another trouble we can have is like going off topic so of course getting distracted by your thoughts and like saying whatever pops into your head instead of like staying on the topic of the conversations that can be off-putting for people. Also people with ADHD tend to have trouble with like follow through and like doing what they said they're gonna do and like with like planning maybe like activities and stuff for their friends so yeah some people can see that as being unreliable especially if they don't know that you have ADHD or they don't know much about ADHD they will see you as just being unreliable and like not a good friend or something but it's like no you just have ADHD just struggle with these certain things but also as I talked about before with like having mood swings some people might see that as them being like overreacting all the time to things and so again that's another reason why they might struggle with having relationships because people just think that they're overacting to things all the time and getting mad about small things. So not many people consider the impact that ADHD has on like social skills and like relationships and stuff like that. Again, it gets easily overlooked as being kind of a sign of ADHD. It's really important to kind of look into like why somebody might have like social difficulties because that gives a lot, of, a lot of insight in like you know what might be going on in their brain like if someone has trouble making friends is it because they don't know how to make friends or is it because they're just distracted all the time or hyper focusing on something specifically and they forget that they should be trying to make friends I don't know so those are all of the signs that people miss as signs of ADHD I just wanted to say that if there's like one thing in this video that you're like oh I do that maybe I have ADHD just because you relate to like one or two things doesn't necessarily mean that you have ADHD but if you if you do think after watching this video that you might have ADHD then I suggest that you just do more research on ADHD. I actually did a video before on the diagnostic criteria of ADHD so if you're interested in checking that out after this video it'll be linked up here so that you can check it out if you want after this. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it or you learned something new then please hit the like button so more people can see it. If you have something that you want to say then go ahead and comment it down below. I love seeing all the things that you guys have to say. And finally if you just like watching my videos then please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post my next video. As always, stay Rachelistic or whatever your name is, Istic, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!